2024 NASCAR schedule has finally been released after months of anticipation. What has NASCAR delivered? Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. So we got our racetracks here over to the left of my, or to the right of me, to the left of your screen. And this is how it goes. So we start off with the Bush Clash, returning to Los Angeles for the third year in a row. That'll take place on prime time at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Really, then from then on, nothing much changes. Duels remain the same, the Daytona 500 remains the same. The big change is race number two. With Fontana no longer being part of the schedule, Atlanta now replaces, or I should say, not only does it replace Fontana, but returns back to the number two slot for a good portion of time in the mid 2010s. Atlanta was usually race number two of the schedule. Now returns back to that slot. Now I understand NASCAR's reasoning for this. NASCAR is saying that they wanted to do this to kind of give casual fans another reason to tune in next week. Obviously, the Daytona 500 is the biggest race of the season. Usually, the second race is the second most watched race of the season, or at the very least, very close. So in NASCAR's mind, and also probably Fox's mind, is to be able to front load with a lot of exciting style of racing, which is drafting, pack racing type of racing. That's what casual fans usually watch. Having Atlanta, which is a type of a version of that and judging by how great the racing was the last fall i can definitely see why nascar wants to do this however i have two issues with this number one the weather usually atlanta weather at this point in time is sucky it is just blech. one race instantly comes to mind is 2015 i think it was where the weather even though we got a race in the weather was just garbage not only was it super cold it was muggy it was foggy it just looked horrendous. Now, even though there were some races that were pretty good in terms of the weather, I think 2016 and 2017 were good. It was so insanely cold and probably not comfortable for fans compared to where it was pushed back later on into the schedule for the past two seasons. So now we're turning it back to the number two slot this early in late February. Not a fan of that. I'm also not a fan of that front loading that I talked about earlier. When you're front loading so much content, so much exciting content, you kind of leave the middle, early middle portion of the season out to dry. Usually a very critical part of it is near the end of Fox's tenure, around the late spring, early June portion of their schedule. That's when things can tend to be a bit dry. Having those drafting style and exciting racetracks like Daytona, Atlanta, and Talladega, spread them out so it's more like a roller coaster. You start out good, then you may have a bit of a down period, then you get back up again with those drafting style tracks. You front loading that, you're starting off at a gray high, and then you kind of just continuing to fall for a longer period of time because you don't have any of that exciting racetracks from a casual fan's perspective to bring the viewership back up. At least that's my mindset. I can understand why NASCAR is doing this, Personally, though, I'm not a fan of it. Las Vegas and Phoenix, the abbreviated version of NASCAR's West Coast Swing, still race number three and race number four. Race number five is Bristol back now on concrete. Now, I like Bristol on concrete, but again, we look at this short track package with this next shine car, not a fan of it. Also not a fan of is the time slot. Again, it's in mid-March majority of these race rain delays or race rain outs when regarding to the spring Bristol race have occurred around this time. Why NASCAR or SMI refuse to just push the spring Bristol day further back to when it's more dry boggles my mind. How many times? I mean, 2023, I think we were lucky when there was no rain delay or, you know, rain part of the race, but 22, it rained. 21 was a full-on flood zone it rained out almost every single year bristol has raced in the spring it's always been a rain out or a rain delay one of the two why they consistently find a way to keep it on this part of the schedule boggles my mind again i'm okay with bristol returning on concrete but again push it back i can understand maybe reasons why it's not possible but when you have to consider from a weather standpoint, and it, I'm going to talk a lot about weather in this video, because one of the main issues I've been having with NASCAR schedules, even though I don't think it's been talked about much, is the timing of these races. It's not so much where you place them, it's when you place them. When do you place them under a schedule that correlates with the season for that part of the race or for the area that you're racing in? And a lot of the races that NASCAR has scheduled 
is not good from a weather standpoint, or at least from a fan experience standpoint. Coda remains race number six on the schedule, March 24th. Cool with that. Love Coda. And then Easter night returns again. A lot of people were saying that maybe Easter night should be done away with. I personally don't think so. I think I'm, me personally, I'm okay with NASCAR racing on Easter night. I mean, people are cool with the NFL on Thanksgiving. They're cool with the NBA on Christmas. People, you know, certain sports have their thing. NASCAR's got Easter. And considering NASCAR does have a big hold with a Christian style fan base, it would make sense to have something like this. At least I think so. But personally, I'm cool with NASCAR continuing racing on Easter night, racing at Richmond under the lights. Again, I like it. I like Richmond. I think Richmond has put on some good races, even though it doesn't maybe pass the eye test to some of the casuals. I like Richmond. But Richmond on Saturday or Sunday night under the lights on a short track, I'm very interested to seeing how that works because at least when it was in the sun, tires still matter. Now when it's a lot cooler, more grip, tires maybe aren't going to wear as much even more compared to when they used to wear uh, how little they wore on during the day. So very interested in seeing how that whole uh, race plays out under the lights. Martinsville next week after that. And then we go to Texas for race number nine of the schedule on April 14th. I'm a fan of this for multiple reasons. Number one, Texas ain't in the playoffs. I'm telling you that right now. It ain't in the playoffs. Thank God. But also, I like the fact that, again, where it's placed at because of the weather. Usually, Texas is either placed on very cold parts or very hot steaming parts. Again, when you look at the past couple of races, when Texas was only in the playoffs, or including the All-Star race, if you want to include that, but especially in the playoffs, it has always been ridiculously hot. Usually, in, in years past, Texas has always been around the early March, maybe, range, and late to mid to late November because it's stupid hot and it usually ends at nighttime. So I'm glad that Texas is making this change no longer because uh, number one, it doesn't deserve to be part of the playoffs, but also number two, from a weather standpoint, it's going to be more comfortable for fans. So I like this decision. And then more or less the same, Talladega, Dover, Kansas, the all-star race returning to North Wilkesboro for the second year in a row, the Coca-Cola 600, Gateway, and then Sonoma, Sonoma, on June 9th, interesting, usually Sonoma is around mid to late June, around June 25th, Ju uh, June 12th, around that area. So for Sonoma to be so early is kind of interesting. Another interesting fact is that next week, remember, we do not get a week break. Usually in years past, NASCAR gets a week break to pass the baton from Fox to NBC for the second half of the season. Because of the Olympic break, we're not getting that. So next week, NBC picks up their coverage of NASCAR with the debut cup race at Iowa Speedway. That is a race I am so looking forward to watch. The only issue I have with it is, again, the short track package. How will that play out? Maybe because Iowa is a pretty big racetrack, even though it is technically a short track. It's, I think, at eight, nine eighths or eight ninths, seven eighths of a mile, whatever, how much it is. But it's a pretty big racetrack and it's old and worn out. And you can maybe see drivers move around. So I think that could help the racing standards a little bit. Going to a new market like Iowa, the fans are for sure going to show out. On Sunday nights, that's another interesting part. On Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the USA Network, very interested into seeing how that will play out and also how maybe NASCAR and Iowa would promote the race. Considering how Iowa and Hy-Vee promoted their IndyCar race weekend, I'll be uh, I'll be curious to see how NASCAR does with their promotion of coming to Iowa for its debut cup race. And then we got some, then we got some more or less the same amount of races coming up. New Hampshire, June 23rd. Then we got Nashville on June 30th. And then the Chicago Street Course returning for a second time on July 4th weekend on July 7th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Now, another point we need to make here about the weather. Look at that time for Nashville. 3.30 Eastern Time. Again, 2021, stupid hot. Blistering hot. 22 and 23, they made that change. Instead of racing in the middle of the day, you race later in the day. You know, I think this year, they think they race at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. I thought that was the perfect time to hold a race at Nashville. Putting it right back smack dab in the middle, middle of the heat's. Especially at this part of the day, 
Again, I do not like this. And for the people that are complaining about me always mentioning the weather, I'm sorry. I just like to be able, as a fan that's attending the race, I like for that fan to be not having to deal with freezing their balls off or sweating their tits off. But yeah, again, another issue with that is that weather placement smack dab right in the middle, that summer heat. Again, you gotta do, NASCAR, I think it's gotta do a better job of, and I know the networks have a role in this. I'm pretty sure NBC had a say in saying, eh, maybe Sunday night, probably not a good idea for Nashville. Let's move it back to 3.30. I won't be surprised if NBC had a say in it. Just again, I, I just, I don't like it. Don't like it. We then go to Pocono and then to cap off the month of July, the return of the Brickyard 400 for its 30th anniversary. I'm excited. I'm happy the Brickyard's back. Regardless if it's great or if it's not great, I, I, I miss it. I miss it. It's like when you let it go, you thought, man, we're not going to need it anymore. But now that it's been gone, you're kind of like, ah, oh, man, I, I want that back now. I miss that feeling. So I'm glad that the Brickyard 400 is back. Interested on the placement, though, because right after that, we get the two week break due to the Olympics. Obviously, with NBC covering the Olympics, they're going to put all their effort and focus onto the Olympics and not on NASCAR. Fair enough. So NASCAR has decided we're going to give you all uh, a two week break. Would have preferred to see it swap, though, because after that Olympic break is Richmond. Again, Richmond's cool and all. Don't like it. I would have preferred to see a swap. Maybe Richmond be the race prior to the two-week break, and then you can use the Olympics as a way to advertise NASCAR returning to the brickyard. You could do some type of promotioning tactic with that. Obviously, Indianapolis is a marquee name. I mean, just the... It, even people that know nothing about NASCAR, nothing about racing, they know the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Only hardcores maybe would know about Richmond, maybe some casuals. But so I would have preferred to see that the swapping of those dates maybe has to do with the fact that because you're getting close to football season, maybe Indianapolis, you know, they didn't want to maybe deal with that. Or maybe the people at NBC or the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Penske's operation there, maybe they thought July 21st was a good slot for it. Maybe. And then we get a real wacky way to close out the regular season. Michigan, race 24, normal. And then we go to Daytona. Yes, Daytona for 2024 will not be the regular season finale for the first time since, I think, 2020. Or since 2019, I should say. All right. The reason for that is because of the Olympics. The week after Daytona will be the Southern 500. That will be the regular season finale. The reason why NASCAR did this is because NASCAR says that Na uh, so the Southern 500 on Labor Day weekend is very important. They want to keep that slot. That's their slot. Well, the Olympics, the way how it's set up, it kind of put NASCAR in the odd position. You can't move Darlington. And I mean, I don't know if Na Day Na they want Daytona to be the regular season or the playoff opener. So they were kind of like forced to put Daytona as the penultimate race of the regular season. Me personally, I don't really care. I know there are some people that were disappointed that re that Daytona is no longer the regular season finale. First off, let's get this out of the way. Number one, it's just for this year, for next year. I highly doubt that this is going to be a permanent thing. Guarantee for 2025, Daytona is back as a regular season finale. Me personally, I don't really care. And people, some people said it's lost its luster. It would lose its luster. Two things. Number one, it's Daytona. And number two, ratings have gone down for that race every single year. So, or almost every single year. So, I don't know. To say it loses luster, I highly doubt that. I It's still Daytona. I mean, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a hardcore fan or if you know nothing about NASCAR. If you see racing at Daytona, you're going to tune in. Regardless of the fact that if it's the regular season finale or not. I don't know. That's just my way of looking at it. But Darlington as a regular season finale, I actually like it. I don't mind it. I don't know. Maybe I'm one of the few that doesn't mind that change. However, we do need to talk about the playoffs. The playoffs will open in Atlanta. The next race is Watkins Glen and we close out the round of 16 at Bristol. You cannot ask for more for three wilder, wackier combination of races. First off, Atlanta. It's no longer a Sunday night race. V again, very dis... Why? Why is it smack dab in the middle at 3 o'clock in the, in the afternoon? Why? 
having it as Sunday night, I feel like would be better. Now, again, maybe it could be because of the fact of Sunday night football. Maybe. I don't know. I think it's because I think September 8th would probably be the season opener. Maybe. I don't know. But Sunday night just is better for Atlanta, especially for the second race. Number two, Atlanta, a drafting track. And we're going to have two drafting tracks in the playoffs. And then we have Watkins Glen, which I love Watkins Glen, but it is just weird. And I, I don't know, maybe to me, but it just doesn't fit in the playoffs, if it makes sense. I like that Watkins Glen is in the playoffs, but it's like, to me, it's like, whoa, what the hell? What are you doing here? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it just seems out of place, at least in my my book. But you could not ask for a wilder round of 16 than those three races. But then after that, it's really pretty simple. Kansas, instead of being the second race in the round of 16, now is the first race in the round of 12. And then after that, everything remains the same. Talladega, the Charlotte Roval returning. There was a lot of people that were saying that the Charlotte Roval would be over by the end of this year. Uh, but Charlotte's reasoning is that when you go to Charlotte, you can go to Charlotte for two different reasons. If you want to see them race on the Oval, you go to the Coke 600. If you want to see them race on the road course, you go to the Roval. So kind of like having two different races, races instead of just having two of the same thing. That's their mindset. Um, me personally, though, don't care for the Roval anymore. Would be cool with them returning back to the Oval, but um indifferent with this decision and the round of eight and the championship four remains the same with las vegas homestead martinsville and phoenix to cap it off all right so there is a look at your full 2024 cup series schedule phoenix instead of ending on the first week of november now is going to be on the second week of november my thoughts on this again uh, oh, the playoffs oh, okay I understand the playoffs is supposed to build hype. I get that. With the way the format is set up, with the win and you're in, and the knockouts, I would I would be fine if we were in the Winston Cup era or the 10 race chase format. But under the elimination playoff style format, even though I know we got stage points or we got playoff points, I get that. Having two drafting tracks and two road courses. The more I think about it, the more I'm, I'm not a, ah, ugh, I don't know. It just feels weird. I don't know. Like, it's interesting. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like, ugh, it's starting to feel just a bit radical. Like, it's, it's, a, it's just starting to feel like it's just a bit of kind of like, screw it. Go balls out. Just go, go at it. Whatever happens, happens. That's that kind of mindset, you know? It's not like a strategic 10 race build to that final race. It's kind of like just making sure every single race is in your face rage or something of that nature. Even though Atlanta is an interesting form of drafting racing and maybe who knows, maybe this Atlanta would prove me wrong because the thing I don't like about it is the fact that we're now throwing in too many big time one hit wonder moments. We saw at the Indy Road Course when Michael McDowell won. I know Watkins Glen and the Charlotte Roval, they're a different style of racing compared to the Indy Roval or to the Indy uh, Road Course. But still, when you have so much oddities in the playoffs, it's supposed to crown what they say, a legitimate champion to try and crown a proven champion for NASCAR for that season. I feel like it should be a bit more the the 10 race bill should be uh should be something that should be at the very least taken more seriously. In my eyes, this 10 race playoff format to me looks like we're just trying to create the wildest champion in history rather than maybe the most deserving champion in history. That's how I view it. I, I don't know. Like maybe I'm proven wrong and maybe I could like the 10 race chase next season. But I don't know, having Atlanta, either Atlanta or Talladega. I don't like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about both of them. I'm not a fan of both of them. I don't know. Maybe my decision, my ideas is unpopular, but that's just how I see things. I give this maybe seven out of 10. I think because of the fact that it was hyped to be bold and innovative. Obviously, we know that Montreal was the reason why things were being held up so much. Iowa's a consolation prize. Iowa is like, well, we can't get Mar Montreal. Eh, let's go to Iowa. We own that track and it's new. Eh, let's go there. So I know it's not, it wasn't NASCAR's first mindset. And I know that NASCAR and Ben Kennedy have said that they have gone through 20 some odd revisions of the schedule. So, but for what we were hearing to then this being the result, it's a bit underwhelming to say the least. Some things I like, again, I don't hate this schedule, but I'm kind of like, 
It's okay. Some things I don't like about it, but there's some things I do like. I like that Iowa's on the schedule. Um, I kind of like that Watkins Glen is on the schedule, even though it's a bit weird. Um, there are, I like that the breakout 400 is back. Again, there's some things I do like about it. I don't hate it. It's kind of like, eh, it's not bad. But again, a bit underwhelming when you consider the hype that we were thinking and anticipating. Maybe that's our fault for jumping to conclusions because a lot of it was just rumors swirling around. But those are my thoughts on NASCAR's schedule. What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And what do you think should host a race in 2025? Until next time, my name is Jet from MBK. Thanks for watching.